Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Yeah. Brother, 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 that's why many, too many of you dying. John Graves, the third, John Wesley Graves, the third, Philadelphia native. And uh, I'm a teacher, but um, my main gig is the arts. So my first, my first recollection of anything related to uh, being inspired by art was my sitting down in rehearsal, watching my mom rehearse for the plays that she was in. I was about two, three years old, and all the other kids was playing around um, in the theater rehearsal. And I was just sitting in front of the stage with my legs crossed, pretty much like how I am right now, being inspired and excited by what I saw. I don't remember what was going on. I just remember that it was taking my breath away at two or three years old, and uh, then that that created some kind of monster in me that translated into everything that I did in school during uh, gym time or recess, I was directing. And then I went through middle school, grade school, high school, and I was directing choirs, I was directing shows, writing scripts. And then I went to Freedom Theater, which really opened my mind to be uh, engulfed in this thing around children and teenagers who were just like me. Because for a long time, I thought I was like one of a kind and like the only person or the only kid in my community that was like really, really, really into the arts because everybody at the time was really into sports and things like that. But my job was the arts because I knew that it could change people and it could make a difference. If you, if you can get people to listen to the song, you can change their heart. If you can get people to like come to a show and hear what you have to say, you can definitely um, make, a, make a difference in their lives even in a matter of three seconds. So that was grade school, high school, went to college, uh, study education. And uh, but the arts was always underlying, um, even what I wanted to do with education. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> How she gonna kill herself? But then she killed herself. Their makeup pops in their eyes. People make the world go round. I didn't plan on starting a company. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just do art. Like I, I just wanted to do shows and stuff. And what happened was like I had a lot of conflicts and stuff going on in my family. And then you know people that I depended on, they just wasn't providing me the support that I needed. So it was like they kind of like situations kind of pushed me into starting a company. And like if you like to do something, whether you want to do it or not, it just kind of like has to happen or you can't, you find yourself in weird and awkward situations where art or whatever you like to do is so prevalent that you just have to do it. So you have to write a song, you have to direct, you have to write, you have to dance, you have to sing, you have to do all of these things or you practically will die or you practically feel like you're gonna die in some, in some instances. So, and then I was around a whole bunch of people who I saw and, and um, symbolically or metaphorically they were dying because they weren't in touch with their passion and in touch with the art. And so I just wanted to provide a space for people who um, were dying. And so helping them live was ultimately kind of like helping me live. And we were helping each other. So people ask me like, what inspires me? But it's like, I get inspired by inspiring people who are inspired, who are inspiring me. So it's like, it's not one thing, it's everything, like all the time. Challenges were big, a big one was just, validation and seeking validation everybody wants to be validated especially from your parents like you just or the people or people that you care about it's possible for a grown man to end up 50 years old making life choices and, and succeeding in grad school and becoming a doctor not because of his own strengths but just to get his attention of his father or just to get the attention of his mother so that was a lot of things that i was a challenge for me just never really feeling good enough and I knew I was good enough but I'm thinking like if people are saying it or people aren't showing up then I must not be good enough and so that was a lot of, that was a that was a huge battle then and it's still a battle now not as much as it was then um, because I've seen the fruit of my labor with or without people there are people there's times like nobody would show up friends wouldn't show up or they say they would come and they wouldn't come I need help nobody got no money there's like People jump on the first thing smoking and I'm not smoking so it's like I really have to like I started with nothing so like everything I have I literally built with nothing like 
I did the flyers, I did the tickets, I did the costumes, I did the lighting, I did the sound, I did the playbill, I did the scripts, I did the casting, I did the auditions, I did the you driving the U-Haul, I did the props, I did every single thing because I didn't know there was nobody else to really do it. And then there was nobody else to do it as passionately as I could. But that taught me a lesson at 19 years old, that everything that you need, you already have. And that, you know, we depend on people way too much, way too much. And it kind of hurts and sucks when they don't come through. But it just brings you back to a resilient place where you're like, you know what, I gotta keep going. Because, going back to that passion, the passion is not going to die. Like, we, we try to kill it when we get tired or complacent, but it finds its way back to the surface every single time. So I get discouraged a, a whole lot, like a lot. And I, and even, even my own self-perception and not knowing my own self-worth is something that I am definitely constantly um, trying to chill with. So, um, but that's that's a challenge. But I'm, I find that that challenge that I have is like glue or magnet to a crap load of people who have the same challenges, but just don't talk about it. So what's coming up at John Grace Productions, uh, we have some auditions coming up. We always got stuff going on. My website is johngraceproductions.org and the same thing on Facebook. We have auditions and we're looking for singers, actors, dancers, musicians, tech people, volunteers, people who have no clue what they're good at. Uh, we have some classes also coming up in workshops and then I'll be at World Live Cafe on August 17th doing my own music set there for about two to three hours. So if you like good music, it's about heart music. And so I'm coming with some, uh, some definitely some good sounds. Um, June, we have a whole theatrical production downtown for about four days. It's called My Son, My Brother, My Friend. It's, uh, it's about um, helping a mother who was mourning the loss of her son. And it involves uh, a great deal of great music, rock music, uh, indie music, and even some gospel and some jazz music. So if you like those things, definitely check us out. Again, johngraceproductions.org or John Grace Productions on Facebook. I would like to dedicate this dedication to the dedicated, which is Mr. John Grace. God bless you, brother. And keep us actors and work from you. You know it's a blessing to be a part of it. And in the theater, and if you dislike some of us, I love you, Grace. But I love you.